Abandoned by the U.S., Kurds lose hope in face of Iraqi aggression. America chooses Iraq, and of course it's Iranian ally, over the Kurds. And it's a, I, I chose this picture. I think it's a very fitting picture of Donald Trump smiling and shaking hands with the Iraqi prime minister that we're going to be talking about in this iState.tv iTop. My name is Paul Gordon, and this is your iState.tv iTop of the day. Pictured here, we see Donald Trump, and we see the Iraqi prime minister, Hader Abadi. Now, before we get to our video, we, we want to remind you of something kind of important to us. Don't forget to subscribe to the iState YouTube channel. Hit that big red subscribe button right there. And after you hit the subscribe button, hit the big bell so you get notices when we make our next video. That's right. You should have been subscribing and hitting the bell right as that part of this video was going on. So we have spoken in numerous articles about the fate of the Iraqi Kurds as of late, now that their usefulness to the United States has appeared to have passed away with the demise of ISIS as a viable force in the region. And if you go, uh, as usual, we will be linking the article, linking the article over... Over there on the right-hand corner, you'll see the article. It should, be, it should, it should have appeared right then and there. Hopefully it did. Uh, and we'll also be linking the article in the description and the comments below. There is a link to our stories, our past stories, as well as this story uh, on that article. So the latest news gets no better with statements made recently by the Prime Minister of Iraq, Haider Abadi. The prime minister made it clear in recent statements that not only will the Iraqis, the Iraqi Kurds, not get the independence they overwhelmingly voted for, but they will lose the autonomy that they had. So they're going to come out of this whole deal pretty much like it looks like maybe the Catalans are going to come out with considerably less independence than they started off with. So the prime minister was giving a speech to praise the work of his military in defeating the Kurdish forces that remained to resist the Iraqis and the Iraqi or the Iranian militias that were assisting them. That's right, Iranian militias assisting them. Now, on that front, there the U.S. general forget which one of them recently made a statement that it's hey, the Iranian militia can go ahead and go home. Good luck with that. At any rate, it was in this speech that he made it clear that the Kurdish region, regional government, the KRG, would no longer have control over their own oil exports. They would no longer have control uh, about what happens along their borders with other nations and they wouldn't even control their own airports. What do you what do you, what he essentially did? He made it clear that little smug little bastard right there. He made it clear that the Iraqi central government would now run all central services in the region, reducing the KRG to nothing more than a token representation of independence. That no longer exists. And this would explain also why the Kurdish president, the Iraqi Kurdish president, recently resigned because he could see the writing on the wall and he wasn't going to be a president anymore anyway. So all of what this cocksure man had to say in his speech, while not receiving tacit approval from the U.S., had received, or not receiving, uh, I should say, uh, the, the, they actually received tacit approval they did not receive overt approval they didn't receive that but they have received tacit approval there you go from the u.s so some have criticized 
uh, Rahava, and and we've we've covered Rahava here on I State, and that'll be linked in the article as well. We've covered Rahava in quite a few articles, and they they, they they this is the regional government in Syria, largely run by Syrian Kurds. It's a it's a very interesting experiment that's going on there. But they they immediately distance themselves from the Iraqi Kurds after this vote for independence, and. Uh, the reason that they did it is is clear because Rahava, unlike the Iraqi Kurds, have long been pragmatic in their approach to negotiating with the powers around them. So the Iraqi Kurds simply leapt for power that they could not hold. Now, what I am not sure of, and the, and the article covers this, but I'm going to kind of go off the article here. What I'm not sure of is the degree to which the United States telegraphed to the Iraqi Kurds, hey, go ahead and do this, man, we got your back. Or the degree to which they maybe they assumed that the United States would not let the Iraqis invade Iraqi Kurdistan. I'm not sure. But either way, whatever the case they miscalculated. And I would say, you know, if you had asked me beforehand, I would have said to them what I would have said to the the Catalans before you, you vote. Make sh absolute sure that you have the reality of power to make this move. Because if you do not, what you will end up with is the very opposite of, of what you ask for. It's... Uh, you know, it's kind of that meme that you see with the the don't tread on me snake and the snake is 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 got the big foot on him and the snake says I specifically asked not for this. <laughs> That's what the Kurd the uh, Iraqi Kurds are going through that is what it the the Catalans who wanted independence are going through. They simply did not calculate the reality of power. So while Rahava has been very careful and not going beyond the power they possess, as I said, the Iraqi Kurds and the Catalans as well, not so careful with that. So in, in, in summing this up, this does serve as a very, very powerful lesson. I've, I've said in other videos, I describe myself as a vis provusian, vis being power, previous being individual, and a vis provusian is always for tilting the balance of power towards individuals and free associations, and let's see where that goes. Let's see as far away from coercive enterprises as we could possibly go, possibly go, not, not based on a hope and a dream, but based on the reality of power. And so, as a vis provusian, self-described, Understanding your reality of power is is absolutely essential. And and this doesn't mean that you're not going to make mistakes, but I would say, and I can't say this definitively, I'll say it more for the Catalans than the Iraqi uh, Kurds, but I would say that the Iraqi Kurds acted without a realistic understanding of the of the reality of power around them. Be that as it may. This does not in any way, shape, or form give a pass to what the United States of America has chosen to do in abandoning its ally. It's, it's once powerful and close ally in, in, in really doing much more than just stop ISIS. Before ISIS, the Iraqi Kurds were, were tremendous assets in combating uh, militant Islam, if you will, for lack of a better term, uh, in the region. And now, now they, they feel like they got a beat on that, I guess. I don't know. But they certainly have a beat on ISIS. ISIS is, is, uh, is, a, is a pallid uh, version of what it once was, and I'm not complaining about that. But they've outlived their usefulness, apparently. And the United States does what the United States has always done. If you're an ally with the United States and you outlive your usefulness and the United States find a reason to horse trade with other powers and sell you down the river, well, that's what's going to happen. And that is essentially what happened here. So my name is Paul Gordon with iState.tv. This is your iTop of the day. America chooses Iraq over Kurds. We will see you the next time. But before you go... Remember this.
Don't forget, if you like what we do, go to our YouTube channel right here, youtube.com slash iState, and hit that big red subscribe button like that. And then after you hit the YouTube red subscribe button, hit that bell. Get notified about every new video just like that. And then you see that and you know that you are subscribed and you will be notified.